The Adventures of a South Pole Pig by Chris Kurtz. Chapter 22. Capitulo 22. Laura felt herself skid toward one side of the ship. Barrels and boxes tore loose from their ropes and came tumbling across the hold of the same direction. The crunching sound seemed to go on forever. She came to stop against a post. For the tiniest moment, nothing moved. Then the ship slowly righted itself. The men above were shouting to one another, but they sounded far away. Flora scrambled to her feet. A small stream of water, just a trickle really, came from nowhere and flowed toward her. She couldn't look at anything else. She just watched the stream as it made its way across the floor. Sophia? Her voice was shaking. From a corner, she saw Alaric stand and run for the stairs. Come on, he shouted. Flora looked around for her friend. Sophia! She squealed, and there was no answer. Instead, the far side of the ship burst open, and an icy river washed over her. <gasps> there was no time to run, no time to scream, no time to even take a breath. The water swept her feet out from under her and carried her thumping along the floor until she smacked her head into a floating barrel. It then banged her into the ship's wall and sent her swirling away toward the other side. And when her head poked above the waves, she choked <coughs> and coughed and tried to call out, but the cold water had locked up her lungs. Now the water began to rise and foam. Flora was not bumping along the floor any longer and her feet couldn't touch except when her hooves hit the underwater boxes. Flora tried to swim up to the stairs, but impossible. The freezing current took her wherever it wished. She was not the only one struggling. Rats were paddling for their lives all around her, and some tried to climb on her, but the water turned her end for end until she didn't know up from down. And finally, her hooves touched something solid. She hoped it was the stairs. Her head broke free of the foam, and she gasped for air. The water tried to pull her away again, but she scrambled and fought to keep her footing. It was the staircase, she was sure. The rats found the same escape route. They swarmed up toward the light and through the open doorway. Flora struggled to climb into a dry step, and just then something grabbed one of her hind legs. No, she desperately tried to pull away, but the thing kept hold of her, tugging her into the seawater once again. Flora panicked. An octopus must have had one giant arm wrapped around her, taking her under. Kick, she told herself. Kick with your other leg. She turned her head to aim, but before she could lash out, she saw a face. It was not an octopus. It was the captain. His arm came across her back and held on. His face was gray, as if the water had washed the color away from it, but his eyes were clear and questioning. In answer, Flora focused on getting to the next dry step. It was a good thing she had practiced pulling that big box around the hold. The weight of the captain's body drove her down into a crouch. She strengthened her legs slowly and towed her load upward. She was not the only one struggling. It was no use. The water was rising faster than she was. She could escape the captain's grasp by kicking him off, and in her panic, she considered it for a second. Then she gathered her hooves under her and pulled up again and again. Don't give up. She was able to climb four or five steps until the captain's arm slipped off her back. She looked behind her. The man's head rested on a step and the water was already bubbling around his chin. A pair of swimming rats found a toehold in his shirt and scrambled over his shoulders and up the stairs. Flora turned around and took the captain's shirt collar in her teeth. And she pulled him up. captain lifted his head and helped by pushing with his hands. 
a step, but as the step went to another step, the two of them began to move out of the rising water. But it was still swirling as high as his waist. Flora felt faint. She couldn't take in air fast enough. Her legs were trembling now from fear, from cold, and from the weight of the captain. But she didn't dare let go. She was sure if she did, she would lose him, and she could hardly stand up. He was starting to slide back. I'm sorry, she wanted to say. I failed. A shadow fell over her. Her hands reached down to drag the captain up. The last few stairs, hands reached down to drag the captain up the last few stairs, and Flora let go of his collar and stepped aside. Alaric was not a big person, but by sitting on the top step and heaving his whole body backwards, he was able to slowly haul the captain through the door on to the deck. Flora scrambled after them, and the sea had almost filled the hold now. Alaric tried to lift the captain to his feet, but failed. I have the captain, he shouted over his shoulder. Don't leave yet. Two sailors ran up. Together, they lifted the man up by his feet and shoulders and hurried to where the last lifeboat was bobbing next to the ship's tail, a rail. Several men reached out to take the captain onto into their arms and lay him in the bottom of the boat. The two who had carried the captain followed. Alaric helped Flora onto the boat, climbed over the rail and stumbled aboard last. They pushed off and a few men paddled hard with oars to create a distance between the small craft and the ship. Flora looked back when she thought that she heard barking coming from the deck, but she couldn't see anything. As Flora felt the lifeboat find its own rhythm against the waves, the explorer groaned and twisted and tipped over sideways, water streaming down its rounded boards. A wave rose from its roll and clawed at the side of the lifeboat, and Flora found her feet knocked out from under her once again. But this time, she landed on something soft. It was the captain. He moaned as Flora struggled off him. She found her footing, climbed onto one of the bench seats, and looked out at the waves. The explorer was still drifting on its side, sinking lower and lower. Then a puff of air bubbled out as, the ship were, as if the ship were breathing its last breath. The men stopped rowing, and everyone turned to watch. The ship there was there one moment, and then suddenly it was not. No big wave followed this time. No white foam. No sign to mark where it had gone down. It was just gone. Bobbing wooden boxes, barrels, and bits of ship parts were all that was left. The iceberg they had struck towered above them like a silent ghost ship, and the men with the oars paddled clear. Flora shivered. She didn't know if it was from fear or cold. The, she spotted a small brown shape floating near the boat. It was a stout-hearted rat, paddling hard with its long tail streaming out behind. And for the first time, Flora felt sorry for her old enemy. The rat's head was swallowed by a small wave. It, when it popped back up, it seemed less strong and less brave. Flora knew from her own short swim that no land animal could last long in these freezing waters. When the rat went under again, she looked away quickly. <laughs> On the board of the lifeboat, some men sat with their heads in their hands and some more rowed. No one spoke. Soon they were pushing through a thick, thick soup of ice and ocean. It was hard to see where the sea left off and where the land, if one could call it that, began. Ahead of them, another lifeboat was fighting to find a way through, a tiny leaf in rough water. The only sound was the knocking of ice against the sides of the boat. Wait, where was Sophia? Flora looked for a spark of orange in the icy water. 
all around. And had she made it onto the other lifeboat? By some chance? Flora didn't see how. It was a frenzy of the past few moments that had been terrible. But the picture in Flora's mind of Sophia fighting the freezing water and going down with the ship was even worse. 